Good morning. I want to thank Father Evans for having me here. I'm going to be preaching your parish mission for the next three days. And uh, I think a lot of you probably know me because I was here for a few months um, back in the summer in the, in the early fall. But in case you don't or you forgot me, I'm Father Twenty. I'm the spiritual director at Marion Central Catholic High School. And like I said, I'll be giving your parish mission. I just want to invite people and kind of give you a heads up about what we're going to be doing. So the topic is how to love the church, especially when it's hard to do. And I got to say, I'm excited and scared. I'm excited, first of all, because, well, to be honest, I'm pretty excited to be talking to somebody other than teenagers for a little while after being a high school chaplain. It'd be nice to talk to you. But I, I'm excited because I love parish missions. You know, it's a great tradition in our Catholic faith that we come together as a parish, often during Advent or Lent, and to kind of set other things aside, to come together as a parish family to focus on the Lord and growing in our relationship with Him. And it's a special time of God's grace. God likes to work a lot of graces in our hearts during parish missions if we're open to it. And it's relaxing and easy for me because whether I do good or bad, God's at work, you know? You know, it's a common thing that priests uh, talk about is, you know, there's that homily that we really prepared, we spent a lot of time on, we were really happy with how it was delivered, and we don't get a whole lot of responses afterward at Mass. But then there's that homily that we gave that we didn't have time all week to prepare, we felt even embarrassed to be up here preaching, it was scattered, we didn't really have a point, and people come up to us after Mass, Father, that was the best homily you've ever given, you know. But that's the Holy Spirit who says what He wants to say through us. I, I'm also excited because I love the topic, I love talking about the Church. You know, probably a lot of you would like to be a fly on the wall when priests get together for their little priest hangouts, you know? When we're sitting, we're talking shop, we're talking about our lives. You guys, maybe after Mass, if you get, get in the car and you're headed to breakfast or headed home, you might talk about the priests at Mass. We talk about you guys. You know, so. um, and it's kind of like guys talking about their wives, you know? There's the good, the bad, the ugly. We just kind of share everything that we're dealing with. But at the end of the day, you're one of the reasons why, one of the major reasons why we became priests. It wasn't just for love of the Lord and the Blessed Mother and the Eucharist, but also for the love of the church. So it's easier to talk about the church. Um, I'm happy to be with your great priests. You know, Father Evans had a, a pretty good impact on my vocation because when I was in college and I was discerning a vocation to the priesthood, they told me to go on one of the vocation camps in the summer. And this one was kind of geared toward high school and college age young men. That's how it was advertised. But when I showed up this particular year, it was really mostly just a bunch of freshmen and sophomores in high school, and I was a junior in college. So I felt a little out of place, a little bit too old for the whole, for the whole group. Well, Father Evans was one of the seminarians there on the camp, uh, uh, during that camp retreat. And if you've gotten to know him, you know his inner child is about 83 years old. So he's kind of an old soul guy. So I could get along and talk to him. He was kind of like a nice normal guy, and he helped me in that, in that time, helped me to kind of move forward in my vocation. But I'm also a little scared, truth be told, you know. Um, there's a reason they don't send priests to their hometowns to be priests there. This is my hometown. My whole parish is Saints Peter and Paul in Cary, but I grew up in Crystal Lake. And, you know, Jesus, when he went to Nazareth, when he went to his hometown, he wasn't able to perform miracles there, and they didn't really listen to him because they knew him. That familiarity can sometimes breed apathy. It's like, I, I know this guy, I know Jesus. He's, he's Joey and Mary's kid. He did the drywall over at Aunt Mary's house, you know. It's like, this guy can't be the Messiah. I don't think there are any ex-girlfriends out there, are they? No, okay. I'm safe there. Now, actually, for some reason, a lot of uh, my ex-girlfriends, they were all Methodists. I think God was keeping me away from Catholic girls, so I'd go be a priest. But uh, I'm also scared because, you know, St. Thomas, it's known as, it's a, it's a distinguished parish. Vibrant uh, life of faith here. you got a lot going on. Great priests have been through here. You get a lot of great speakers. Um, and also, you know, as I'm driving through Crystal Lake, I was driving through downtown Crystal Lake, and us, you know how you see things from, from growing up, and it reminds you of stories. I was, I was driving through Crystal Lake, and I saw Duke's Ale House, which, of course, used to be Duke O'Brien's. You know? My family used to go there when I was a kid every Friday night. Well, I was reminded of a story um, that happened right before I went into, into seminary. I was, I was at Duke's with my sister. I think it was her birthday, because we were both home. And, and we ran into a couple of my friends from high school, um, or just a couple of acquaintances, um, Amy and Emily. And, you know, 
Amy I had known pretty well. Amy, uh, Emily was just kind of in that class. I wasn't really friends with her. And, and I started talking to them quickly. And, you know, we, we did that thing where we exchange our cell phone numbers. Maybe we'll get together sometime. And, and Emily asked me, are you still dating that girl, Sarah? I said, oh, no, I'm not dating her. But I didn't really say more than that. I was talking with Amy. And I was sharing with Amy what was going on in my life, that I was going into seminary uh, that, that upcoming fall. And she was telling me that she's engaged to be married to this guy. And so we said, we should get together sometime. It would be great. It would be fantastic. And so the next day, I texted Amy. I said, it's great to see you. Glad I got your number. Let's get together sometime. And, and, and then I said, there's a, you know, there's a movie tomorrow night at the, at the movie theater. Maybe we can get together for that. Of course, I'm thinking her and her fiance and me. We get together and hang out so I could get to see him. And once we agreed on the time and everything, I said, great, it's a date. You know, I wasn't meaning anything by it. She knew I was in seminary. I'm not dating. Then I get a call from Amy immediately after saying that. And when I pick up the phone, I say, hello, and she says, what time are you picking me up? But it wasn't Amy. It was Emily. <laughs> and Emily didn't know I was going into the seminary. I just realized I had accidentally made a date with this girl. <laughs> Poor girl. Nice girl, sweet girl. Other circumstances, maybe I would have. But I said, I had to explain this. No, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I thought you were Emily. I wasn't trying to go out on a date. But it'd be great if we all went out and hung out. So. I didn't know really what I was getting into, right? I didn't know what was really happening as this was going on. So the mission, the topic is how to love the church, especially when it's hard to do. How to love the church, especially when it's hard to do. I chose that topic for two reasons. First, I had been praying about what I should preach about, you know, because I had a buddy priest who said, oh yeah, when I did my mission, I was asking God and he told me clear as day, this is what I want you to talk about. And I was getting pretty jealous. I wanted to have that, those clear words and I wasn't getting anything. I was praying for months and it didn't seem like the Lord had anything for me. Until one day, I was driving. I can remember the very intersection where it happened. Wasn't, I wasn't thinking about this. I wasn't praying about this. But the Lord just said to me right out of the blue, I want you to talk about my bride, the church. And in that moment, I was kind of filled with a sense of the love that Jesus has for his church. In the same day, when I got to school, where I, where I work, in the morning, a friend of mine from college, who's not Catholic, only nominally Christian, but who respects my priesthood and my faith, he said to me, he, he called me up and he said, you know, I've been, I've been reading some of these articles about what's going on in the church and the crisis and the scandals, and man, it's got to be hard to be a Catholic these days, let alone a priest. How do you do it? And a couple hours later, one of the staff members at the school came into my office. He's a great guy. He's got three kids, great dad. He comes into my office, he says, Father, I need to vent. And he said, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to raise my kids Catholic, but it's hard when I see the things going on in the church. It's hard for me to keep on the straight and narrow path. Then the last thing that happened, and this one really crushed me, is that one of the students in the school came into my office and he's a, he's a kid who is kind of thinking about the priesthood. So he comes into my office Oh, about once every other week during his study hall. Really, I think he just wants to get out of study hall because he's bored. But he comes into my, into my office to talk to me. But this day, we don't talk about the priesthood. He comes in and he says, Father, can we really believe that God started this church? I mean, wouldn't he have known everything that was going to happen? Would he have started this church if it was going to end this way? Well, that really cut me to the core. And we had to talk about that for a while. So that's kind of behind this idea, this topic for the mission. Now, last thing I want to do is um, get a little bit of Catholic congregational participation. I know we're not usually used to that. Don't worry, everybody gets to stay in their pew. You know, my mom, my mom and dad, they're snowbirds. They go back and forth uh, down to Texas in the winter. And they love being down there. They love retired life. But when they go down there, they're not the biggest fans of their priest at the church there. Priest parents can be pretty harsh, pretty critical. Well, <clears throat> the priest that they have down there is kind of a, a Baptist, Pentecostal type preacher, you know? Very, very loud, excited. He walks around the pews. He calls on people, asks questions. A lot of times he says, can I get an amen? Well, my mom is a very, very uh, Irish cradle Catholic. You know, the only time you ever are supposed to get excited in church is never. <laughs> so he comes up to my mom and he gets in her face. He says, can I get an amen? No. <laughs> Atta girl, mom. 
So I know that's not what we're used to, but I just want to do one thing. I'm going to ask a few questions, and I'm going to ask that if you can answer yes to these questions, just raise your hand. But first, so we can get in the comfort zone, everybody just raise your hand. Everybody, no matter what, just raise your hand. Okay, we've jumped over that hurdle, right? It's not that big of a deal. All right. Could you say that you love the Lord Jesus Christ? Okay, that's a good response. Do you love the Blessed Virgin Mary, our spiritual mama bear? Awesome, love it. Do you love all the amazing things about our Catholic faith, the Mass, the Eucharist, the liturgy, the beautiful music, the artwork, the theology? Do you love that? Okay, last question. Do you love the church? And I might add, the institutional church. It's a little bit different right on that one, right? We're at a time where Catholics, they might still love their Catholic faith, but this actual group of people, the one holy Roman Catholic apostolic church spread throughout the world, we're a little rocky on that right now. Now, if you held your hand down at your side decidedly because you're not happy with the church right now, this mission is for you. If you were kind of unsure and you were back and forth, you love your Catholic faith, but you're kind of struggling and feel confused right now, this mission's for you. And even if you raised it confidently, proudly, I love the church warts and all, this mission is for you too because I want to encourage you in that. We might have reasons why we think we don't want to come to a mission on this topic. We can be turned off of this subject because we've been talking about it for so long, right? The original scandal broke in like 2001, 2002. That was right when I was starting to discern my own vocation and it was tough. We might be sick of this topic. We don't want to talk about it anymore. We wish it would just go away. You know, Cardinal Dolan, the Archbishop of New York, was once asked that recently by a journalist in an interview. They said, now, your eminence, wouldn't you just prefer if we just didn't ask you about this, if we stopped talking about it? He said, no. Ask the tough questions. We need to keep talking about this. We need to deal with this. We need to sit with it. We need to be embarrassed. And he said, frankly, as bishops, we need to, we need to kind of grovel at the feet of the world and ask for mercy. We need to keep talking about it. You know, and people who heard me say, leading up to this, that this is what I was going to talk about, said, oh, Father, good luck. I wouldn't want to talk about that. But the thing is, is for me, I don't think it's that tough because if you're if you're upset if you're angry if you're confused I'm not here to con correct that or to change that for you you know righteous anger is actually a virtue we should be angry when injustices are committed but anger like any emotion it's an emotion and so it can it can go askew or awry it can be misdirected it can be ineffective and so what I want to do simply for this mission is to try to help you to see the church as Jesus sees it. And what you'll see, I think, is something beautiful. So we have three nights, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night here in the church. Talks won't be any more than an hour, uh, seven o'clock. They're successive, they build on each other, but if there's one that you gotta miss, that's okay, don't scrap the whole thing. Each one will make sense on its own as well. I'd ask you to bring a friend, bring a couple friends, especially if, they're, if they've been away from the church, especially if they've been angered or hurt by the church to bring them bring them to these talks you know the devil wants to keep us away and he gives us good excuses you might be thinking i'm too busy this stuff isn't for me i'm doing okay in my spiritual life i i already know what it'll be about and i've been to missions before i know the whole shtick but if my little texting accident is any indication we don't always really know what we're getting into in my case it was a big mistake but in your case i think i hope I pray that if you come, it'll be a pleasant surprise. Thanks, everybody.